Welcome to the WXBR and Brockton Community Access uh, Candidates Forums. Today we have um, the Ward 2 School Committee race. First of all, thank you guys for having us here. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Um, I, my name is Crystal Love and I'm a Brockton born resident. Um, I've been involved with youth and youth services ever since I can remember. I've been um, somebody that, that um, would love to serve and, and always had a knack to serving my community ever since I, I can remember. Starting in elementary, going all the way up until what I do today. Um, I just want to have the opportunity to be able to serve my community um, on school committee. Thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, I want to thank you guys too for having us. Uh, Mark, Ron, um, everybody, Brock and Cable Access, uh, XBR. Uh, this is a great opportunity for the candidates, um, and we, we appreciate it, and a great opportunity for the public as well to hear from school committee especially. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andy Robinson. I've probably served uh, for the last two years on school committee here in Brockton, um, and I'm once again asking for your support uh, in my reelection. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting and talking and, and working with, with many of the folks here in Brockton since, since being on the school committee and even before. Um, I moved to Brockton about six years ago, my wife and I. Uh, we were looking for a community we could call home, um, a, a community that had tradition, diversity, and, and real possibility. Um, and we saw that here in Brockton, and we invested in it. Um, and since the first day I've been here, I have been investing in Brockton Youth Soccer, Neighborhood Watch. Uh, it all led me to the school committee here in Brockton. I've used my experience as a former teacher uh, in 15 years of dedicated professional service in, in working with youth uh, over the past few years. I've learned a lot, and, and I believe that I'm the one uh, to, to represent Brockton on the school committee for another two years. Okay, a half an hour will go quickly, just so you know, and uh, it, we can, we'll be able to do a little bit of give and take back and forth as well. And uh, we'll start with the first question with Ron. And same rules, a minute, and we'll mix it up back and forth. What's specific about uh, your ward uh, affects the school committee? Is your demographic different than other wards? What specific uh, concerns do you have that other wards may not? We'll start with Andy. Uh, well, Ward 2 is one of the largest populated wards in the city, um, but we have one of the lowest voter turnout rates, uh, I guess for better or for worse. Uh, we also uh, include the, the lowest socioeconomic uh, um, census tract in the city. Um, so we have a lot of high-need families. Uh, that's reflected in our known school, uh, most certainly. Uh, you know, Brockton and, and the Brockton Public Schools have been working for a long time, and especially over the last two years, to offer a lot of uh, opportunities to all sorts of learning needs, uh, whether it be language, whether it be uh, you know special needs, uh, or whether it be ex accelerated learning programs. You know, for kids who uh, who who want opportunities to. Um, you know, take extracurriculars and all those types of things. So I think, you know, Ward 2 is unique in a lot of ways. We don't have a lot of voters, but we have a lot of needs. And, 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 the, and, the, uh, and the school committee works to meet those needs here um, in Ward 2 and, and outside of it. So um, I can agree with everything that Andy said. Um, I think, though, another thing that, that needs to be addressed in, in Ward 2 is the alternative school. I mean, we have the Keefe School. We have individuals that are dropping out all the time and you know in the position that I hold at the Workforce Investment Board that's some of the things that I you know I see all, all the time and that's one thing that is is huge so with the whole new curriculum change and with the students being able to have the ability to do two tracks career track versus uh, a college track and having you know the opportunity to to find alternative way, ways to get their high school diploma is is something that you know we we should actually really focus on going forward okay um, i'm going to ask the next question and i'm going to actually give two minutes for it um Great. we'll reverse the order um why are you running for the school committee why do you think it's important and what prompted you to get involved in the race or running for re-election either way i'll start with alicia i mean sorry crystal it's okay. i'm looking at my script <laughs> it's okay. I get name changes all the time. But um, definitely, I'm running for school committee because, um, again, I was born and raised in Brockton. Um, I have a child in the school system today. Um, he goes to the Arnold School. Um, I'm a woman. There's not many women that actually sit on you know, the committee. There's only one at the, time, at the moment. Um, 
working with parents in the community when, when I volunteer and hearing the concerns that they have as far as um, the school system goes and having experience going to the school and knowing, you know, what it's like to, to be a student in the school system, you know, prompted me to, to become, to, be on, to put myself on the ballot and having the support from local uh, community uh, leaders, et cetera, had, you know, gave me the confidence and everything that I need to actually move forward with it, so. Okay. Um, I'll have to call you Bob now. Yeah. Just to mess it up. Just to, just to stay on track. Um, you know, I think what's prompted me to, to run for re-election is, is the, my last two years of experience. The, the learning curve for school committee is, is, a, is a steep one. Um, and, and really, it takes you, you know, six, eight months to a year under some circumstances to really get your feet wet and get your feet underneath you. We dealt with a lot of transition as a school committee in the last two years. Uh, you know, we saw one superintendent transition out. We had an interim period, and now we have a great new superintendent in. Um, and, and we were able to get some really great things done in that time. Uh, you know, we developed out our alternative pathways programs, and we're continuing to develop out our alternative pathways programs. Uh, you know, uh, it, uh, an evening academy, uh, m multiple ways for you to, to not only gain a diploma, but to gain college credit even before graduating from Brockton Public Schools. Um, you know, and, and uh, I see myself as having more work to do. Um, and I see myself as now being well positioned to do that work. Um, I have been working uh, in large part to increase recycling in our district. Uh, those efforts in, in my first two years have saved the district almost $100,000 annually, and that's just simply recycling cardboard. Simple, simple thing. Uh, you know, I worked uh, over this summer to, to raise $25,000 um, to put recycled bins in every classroom in the district. Um, not only does that teach kids great lessons about what it means to be responsible to your community and responsible to your environment, but it, it teaches kids, uh, you know, that, that we can do something. It empowers them to do something, to, to change things. And, and those are the types of things that I see happening in the next two years. Um, and I, I look forward to being a part of them with, with, uh, with our new superintendent. Thank you. Next question is from Mark. How do you balance the needs of a school system to be a parent for the child itself? In the sense, in some of the wards in some cities, uh, the schools give the children two out of three of their meals during the course of the day, act as uh, babysitters, I don't mean that in a negative term. Uh, but how do, you, how do you balance that and the responsibility of, of what a real responsibility of a school should be? Me first? Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a tough task. Um, and, and one that a lot of people in the city feel differently about. Some people feel like we're not doing enough and some people feel like we need to do more. Um, and, and some people feel like we're already doing too much. Uh, you know, in my first two years on school committee, I, I was part of a district wellness uh, committee. I represented the school committee on that committee. And um, we looked at the wellness policies of our district and, and a lot of them focused on the needs of our students. High rates of asthma, uh, obesity rates, uh, you know, students who have been victims of trauma. Uh, who have experienced trauma at home in their community, maybe even before coming here to Brockton. Um, I worked with that wellness committee to write a $300,000 grant to serve breakfast in the classroom to every elementary student in Brockton, and over the next three years, that's what's going to be happening. Um, you know, our schools are developing out programs like uh, positive behavioral interventions um, and, and our, our uh, trauma-centered learning environments, which I think are great initiatives, again, that I look forward to being a part of and, and seeing kind of build out over the next two years. Um, and, and I don't see us so much as being babysitters, and I know you, used, you, you didn't use that word in a derogatory way, but um, really we provide consistency for young people, and young people need consistency in their lives. We provide a safe space that they can go to every day and know what to expect, um, and that's important for young people. Um, Young people who have that at home and young people who don't still need that in their lives. They spend eight hours with us, maybe more, every single day. Um, and we have a responsibility to that. And, and uh, you know, that's an important part of what we do. And, and I'm in fully support uh, of, of any program that provides for our students in that way. So um, I think I definitely agree with um, having the school system act as, you can say, uh, maybe a parent or... Um, I don't, like, like Andy said, I don't see it as babysitting either. I see it as having a caring adult that you might not have at home. Um, some students or some, some of these kids go to school 
and they come home and their mother or father is at work. Both of them might be at work. They might have an older sister, sister or brother taking care of them and giving them dinner. So having those types of um, programs in the school system like the free, br the free breakfast program or having um, the ability to, you know, tap into a adjustment counselor at school or having the ability to, you know, talk to your teacher about things that you might not be able to talk to a parent at home, it's, it's important, it's very important. And I um, also, you know, am for, you know, thinking out the box and having the school system as something, um, as a place that you can actually, you know, go for social services, et cetera. Thank you. Um, next question would be for me. Um, what makes you, with your life experience, um, without making, this is a very agreeable debate, and I want to keep it that way, but what makes you different from your opponent and why you should either be elected or re-elected? I think. Starting with me. Yes. So, um, I've mentioned this earlier. I was born and raised in Brockton. Um, I went through the Brockton school system starting in Downey School. Um, in Downey School, <clears throat> I was elected as a guardian angel in fifth, I was starting in fifth grade, and I basically assisted first and second graders um, with their homework, tutoring, etc. starting that early, um, only to go into um, high school working in several daycare systems, um, basically going to Bridgewater State University, working in the daycare there, being a lead mentor to Brockton High School students. From, um, from there, I started uh, at Baywib, Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board, became the director of youth services, um, also being a mentor to Training Resources of America's Parent Program, sitting on the Brockton Promise Caring Adults um, team, and being a mother of a five-year-old child that's in the school system today, I can say makes me different from Andy. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I represent a, a different demographic in Brockton. Um, you know, the city has been changing over the last 10, 15, 20 years. Um, my wife and I, we chose to invest in this community. We chose this community for a lot of what's, what's great about it. Um, and we represent a, a demographic that is growing in this city. New families, young families uh, investing. Uh, you know, in my next two years, uh, I'll be thinking about this position a little differently. My wife and I are expecting our first baby this year. And, and that's an exciting thing for us. But it's, it's really made me think about a, a lot of things, including uh, the state of our schools. Um, you know, I have experience in the classroom and, and I try to bring that um, not only to the school committee table but to other places uh, that my role as a school committee member allows me to. Um, I sit in on teacher trainings. Uh, I, I take opportunities when they're available to walk through the classrooms and be available to see what's happening and to understand it. Um, and I think I'm, I have the ability to look at it in a way that, that no member of the school committee really does um, as a result of having been in the classroom for four years. I have a degree in education. Um, you know, and, and while that's, my, my career pathway has taken a, a little bit of a change, uh, I've worked with youth for all 15 years as a professional, so, um, you know, I, I, I feel like I bring some of those things. Okay. Do you personally have time to be involved in the school committee and the subcommittees involved and... Yeah. I think that, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think one, one thing that people don't realize about school committee is how much we actually meet and, and what the responsibilities we hold is. Uh, you know, on cable access they see our twice a month meetings. Uh, but, you know, we serve on our own subcommittees and that means sometimes three, four, uh, even more meetings a week um, if, if uh, there's a collective bargaining session going on or during budget season. Um, you know, but there's also school events that take place during the school day. Um, you know, community schools graduations, uh, school plays, sporting events. Um, you know, my job fortunately allows me some flexibility uh, to be able to attend events both in the evening and at, on school days. Uh, it, it's allowed me the flexibility to, to sit in on teacher trainings that have happened during, uh, during the, the regular work day, uh, on weekends. Um, you know, certainly it, it's, it's a sacrifice we make as school committee members and as, as elected officials to spend time away from our families 
uh, to meet those kind of demands of the job. Uh, but it's something that I've been doing for two years. It's, it's something that I think I understand pretty intimately at this point. Um, and, and I had a conversation with my wife before running for re-election about what it was going to mean for us for the next two years. Um, and, and we're both she's supporting me and, and, and I'm prepared for it. So um, I definitely uh, know that it's going to be um, a lot of work on the school committee. And from my past, you know, I've always done a lot of things. Like I've, I started a, a nonprofit women's group, and I'm the founder of that group. And you know, one of the things that we did was meet on a regular basis, and we had subcommittee meetings, and we had board meetings, and those things, you know, were hard. But I made it. I made it work, and that's what um, it's all about. It's about when you set your mind to do something, you do it and you make it work. And I feel like being a part of the school committee is not gonna stop me from, you know, being able to be with my son and do, you know, the regular things that you do in life. I think that I'll make it happen and it will be something that, you know, will be a, a learning experience, it will be a change, but I think I'll, I'll be able to make the time to do it. Okay, next question would be for me. Um, uh, Andy mentioned about uh, being on TV twice a month at, at, on Brockton Community Access and reported in the newspaper and on radio. Um, as an individual member of the school committee, one of seven, how would you communicate with your constituents and get parent feedback other than just the hearing of the visitors at the school committee? So that's me. Crystal's first. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I plan to attend the. Um, the PTA meetings at our own school. Um, I plan to attend as many events in the community as possible um, and, you know, just get my face out there and meet people, ask them, you know, what is it that that you see as a concern or what is it that you would like, you know, the school committee to address. And I'll take it, you know, back to the school committee and, and um, basically push for whatever it is that the parents are, um, are asking for from the, you know, when there's like, um, can I have a second? Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I'll push for, you know, what these parents are looking for, and I'll just be one of those people that will advocate. I ha I'm a very outgoing person. Um, I love meeting people, and networking is something that, you know, that I'm good at. So that's what I will do. Um, you know, we have a lot of different demands on us as school committee members, and, and our role is budget and policy. Um, and so we kind of have to meet those demands within those boundaries. Uh, you know, but I think, like, like Crystal said, attending PAC meetings, we have a new school now in Ward 2, the Barrett Russell Kindergarten Center, which is something we're very proud of as a school <coughs> committee, and it's a great building. Anybody who hasn't seen it should, should take time to get over there and see it. Um, what's happening there is, 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 is great education. Um, you know, so attending those PAC meetings, uh, but our constituencies go beyond our parents. I mean, our, our teachers ha have a stake in what takes place, uh, our administrators, uh, even those who aren't parents. You know, taxpayers ha have a stake in what what happens within our schools and the decisions we make uh, around the budget and around policy. Um, and so there's a lot of different people to listen to. I feel like I've done a good job uh, of listening to those over the last two years. I feel like I've done a good job responding to issues. Uh, sometimes we don't have the solutions that people are looking for. Uh, but I think to make yourself available, uh, to listen, um, and, and to do everything you can to meet their concern is, is all that people really want. Uh, you know. Uh, they don't always expect me to agree with them. I, I don't ever promise to agree with them, um, but but um, you know I promise to listen, and and uh, you know that means knocking doors. That means uh, you know once or twice a year, my wife and I we host a, a neighborhood barbecue in our backyard. We invite about 300 of our closest neighbors out. Um, you know we get anywhere between 20 and 70 people, um, but it's a great opportunity not only for people to access us. Um, but we invite other public officials and, and they have an opportunity to access them too. So to continue doing things like that, uh, to do what I know has worked, um, and to just be as responsive as I can and listen to people is, is, is all I can promise. I didn't wave Andy off on that one. He Sorry. Extra, I, extra <laughs> I was waiting um, for the wave. Okay. No, no. Um, do you have anything to add? No, it's okay. Okay. Um, one thing I'll offer up, I do it every two years. Um, usually I do it every two years at election time. I don't get to do it in the in-between years. You guys have another opportunity to communicate. You have an educational channel and a government channel on cable access. And WXBR is a wonderful community partner in terms of being on for interviews. So think of some of the non-traditional means as well. I'm just putting in a pitch for that.
okay? Absolutely. Um, Why? Is it your turn or is it my turn? I think it's my turn, but okay. you can't go on the radio unless I get invited to a barbecue by either of you. <laughs> so far, that deal Consider it done. All right, all right, I guess I'll piggyback off of him and have some okay. barbecues as well. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, bullying has been a, uh, a very uh, outward subject in the past year, and the state has uh, opinions and laws about it, which I cannot understand, and I, I don't think you might either. Uh, wh what is... What do you think the policy should be in Brockton as far as bullying is concerned? Is it strong enough? Is it understandable? Is it followed? One of the things I never understood was when there's bullying involved, kids are just being kids. Where do you draw the line with that as far as the responsibility of the school is concerned? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a really, really tough issue and, and one that can't be answered in a minute, to be quite honest with you. Um, our, our policy isn't, um, I don't believe our policy is as strong as it should be. Um, it's probably also not as current as it should be. Uh, but one of the things that's on our agenda before the next school committee session starts is to review that policy manual. Um, I think we do as good a job as, as we can. You know, teachers, uh, administrators are expected to do a lot within a school day. And, and we've talked about everything from feeding breakfast to, to teaching the curriculum. Um, you know, I think uh, we need to empower our teachers to, to understand what falls under bullying. Uh, there's no reason any kid should ever feel unsafe at school, ever. Um, but we know that kids do. We know kids miss school because of it. Uh, you know, certainly uh, I've gotten calls from concerned parents, um, and we work as hard as we can to address those things. Um, you know, every time an issue like this comes up, you, you kind of have to look at it for what it is. There are certainly things that we have no tolerance for, weapons and threats. Uh, absolutely, absolutely have zero tolerance policies around. Uh, but you know, the things that happen on the playground, on the school bus, even after kids leave school, you know, that, that's the crazy thing about our world today is uh, students have access to each other through Facebook and through phones, and where, where, do, where does our responsibility stop and where does the responsibility of others pick up? Um, those are really, really difficult issues. We're talking about increasing technology in our schools, but with the increase in technology are going to come some of those things. And, and so how do we have responsible internet usage policies within our schools that, that help kids understand the impact that these types of mediums can have? Uh, you know, so there's just so much. Uh, but, but what I see happening in the elementary schools is really encouraging to me. Uh, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but uh, we're implementing positive behavioral interventions. And, th and those are interventions that focus on, uh, you know, recognizing the kids who are doing well um, versus kind of punitive uh, actions. And I think it encourages uh, more positive, uh, caring behaviors in, in students. Okay. Um, everything that Andy just said is um, great. And I actually, reviewing the um, minutes online from the school committee um, meetings, I've, I did notice that they are going to be reviewing the, pol the um, bullying policy. And I thought that was a great idea because like he said, you know, social media is something that, you know, kids do actually get bullied on and um, texting and uh, emailing and all of those those items should be included in the policy and that should be something that should be revamped. In addition to, you know, the kids have access to internet during the school day. They can go to the library. They can use the computer. So things like this, things like bullying could happen during the school day. So it's something that should be addressed and it should change. The policy should change. I think so. Okay. I'm going to ask a question about parental involvement. It seems like there's a lot of activity at the elementary level, um, you know, even K through 5. It, it, everything's changed. Um, when I went to school here, there were four junior high schools. Now there's a lot of middle schools. How can you get more people involved in the school itself at the middle school level in a, or at the high school level? So I think um, uh, one way to get more parent involvement um, or people involvement in the middle school to high school level is po possibly reaching out to you know these parents, going going to the home, um, basically you know letting them know that you're that the the teachers, uh, the administrators, all these people are here to support them and their their child. It's not just about teaching their kid; it's about making sure that. The, the household teaches the kid in addition to the school system. So going to the household, um, being sure that, you know, you send home information that, you know, the parents can understand. Some parents 
don't speak English, uh, sending, you know, information in different languages, multi-languages. Um, basically, you know, being a face in front of these these people going having you know community events inviting them to it would al allow for um, more parent involvement you, need a um, you know I'm, I'm not sure necessarily um, I, I think we struggle with parent involvement at every level um, but I think the involvement looks different depending upon the level you're at when you're in elementary school you're talking about open houses and pack nights a, a, a lot of our uh, parents take advantage of uh, parent-teacher nights, especially in, at the elementary levels. When you get to high school and middle school, you're talking about student athletic events, musicals, uh, you know, art shows, sporting events. Um, we can always do better engaging our parents. Um, I think we do it by making opportunities available um, at all different times of day, um, morning, during the work day, uh, or traditional work day, and, and evenings, uh, and even weekends. I think you look at our superintendent, what she's doing now, uh, hosting listening sessions all over, mm -hmm. all over the um, city. Um, I think it shows that that she is going to be dedicated to um, taking those steps that it's going to take to engage more parents, and, and certainly I'm in full support of them. Okay, we've come to I believe the five minute mark, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, time for uh, closing statements. So, uh, order of closing statements is Chris. First. So, um, being a Brockton lifelong resident, um, attending elementary school, junior high, and the high school, getting my um, degree at Bridgewater State with the assistance of actually going through the school system, um, I wouldn't have been able to, to do that if I didn't attend Brockton High, I believe. Um, being a mother of a child that's uh, attending the Arnold School, having a workforce development background, and with the, the changes in the curriculum today, as far as the college, and career, the college and career readiness goes, and thinking of science, technology, mathematics, and in those 21st century skills that come from my background as a director of youth services, allows me to have you know the skills and the ability to uh, sit on the school committee, bring in different networks, um, and I, you know, I understand writing of policy in the position that I am. I, I work on budgets every day on a daily basis, and I know that's, you know, a huge, um, a huge uh, point that you have to actually make on the school committee, and you have to understand. Um, I feel like, you know, potential funding, bringing bringing in potential funding opportunities, having experience writing grants would be uh, be beneficial for the school committee and. Um, just vote for me. Um, vote for love. When you see when you see love on the ballot, vote for love. <laughs> Great. Uh, I want to thank you guys again, uh, gentlemen, for, for hosting us, and I want to thank Crystal for being here. At, or Crystal, excuse me. Um, okay. I, it's a it's a it's a great thing um, to see people politically engaged in Brockton and, and running for office. Um, you know, I'm really proud of my record over the past two years. Um, I've served on the collective bargaining, uh, uh, the certified collective bargaining subcommittee. Uh, we negotiated teacher evals and health insurance in, the, in this last two years. I uh, sat on the bid review and certified grievance subcommittees. Uh, you know, we've worked through a superintendent transition, uh, a new high school principal transition, uh, and I served on both of those interview committees. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, over the last two years uh, significant improvements in, in green building. Uh, we've got new roofs, new boilers, and new windows for a lot of our schools. Increased pathways options for kids, including the Edison Academy and the alternative schools. Uh, we reopened the Barrett Russell Kindergarten Center, um, something that I'm incredibly proud of to have in Ward 2, especially. Um, you know, I served on the District Wellness Committee and, and uh, wrote this uh, Breakfast in the Classroom grant, or helped to write this Breakfast in the Classroom grant. I've worked with students, staff, classroom teachers, and administrators across the district um, on, on addressing their needs and identifying them. And, and just sitting with them and understanding what it is that they do on a daily basis. Um, you know, I saved the district $96,000 um, in my first year on the committee by uh, pressing to increase uh, recycling, and I'm, I'm going to continue to work on that. I secured $25,000 in donations um, via Republic Services, our waste management provider, and the, and the Brockton Education Association. And that'll provide education um, for our students around recycling and green policies but also uh, recycle bins in every classroom in the district, which will save us even more money. There are a lot of challenges that are coming in the next two years, however. Uh, you know, we have the implementation of the Common Core and Park, uh, implementation of an educator evaluation tool. Uh, you know, 
we need a lot, including uh, an open contract negotiation coming. Uh, we need experience. We're going to have three new members, um, and I'm getting my, my cut signed. But I ask that you just um, really consider my experience and, and vote for me when it comes to this November 5th. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more candidate forums leading up to November 5th.